Hello, this is Evan Beach. We're continuing applying the principles of green chemistry with Module 3, Designing Solutions. In Module 2, we learned how the 12 principles of green chemistry can be used to examine a chemical's life cycle and determine what is or what is not sustainable about it. In this module, we're going to see how the 12 principles of green chemistry can be used to create concrete solutions to unsustainable practices in chemistry. Solutions, after all, are the engines of real change. Our goal is to use the 12 principles in ways that enable and accelerate the design of chemicals and processes that are green from their inception and therefore capable of reinventing the way we practice chemistry. The 12 principles can be used to identify specific places where hazardous and therefore unsustainable practices take place. For now, we'll focus on four crucial challenges. Eliminating waste. Reducing energy consumption. Eliminating hazardous solvents. And depending less on non-renewable resources. Other areas will be covered in the assignments and activities that accompany this module. Let's start with waste, something that several of the 12 principles seek to eliminate. Now you'd think that eliminating waste would simply be a matter of common sense. Waste, after all, eats resources, money, and time. And hazardous waste is even more dangerous and more expensive. So let's consider two solutions to reducing waste. One is atom economy, and another is creative use of catalysts. Atom economy focuses on squeezing more efficiency out of every chemical reaction involved in a chemical process. This is a better measure of reaction efficiency than yield the more traditional measure that chemists are used to dealing with. When we try to achieve greater atom economy, as much as possible we want to see all of the atoms in the starting materials actually end up in the final product, leaving behind little or no waste. In this example we see two molecules of thymine coming together they undergo a cyclization reaction, giving you a thymine dimer. If you add up the number of atoms in the starting materials and the number of atoms in the final product, you see it's the same before and after the chemical reaction. So this is an example of a 100% atom economical reaction. Another way we can eliminate waste is by using catalysts to promote chemical reactions. A great deal of chemical waste in the world results from inefficient use of stoichiometric reagents. Stoichiometric reagents essentially take a brute force approach to chemical conversion. These reagents can carry out no more than one chemical transformation before they're no longer useful. And when they have to be used in excess, which is often the case, then an enormous amount of waste results. Fortunately, there are far more efficient alternatives, catalysts. Catalysts can carry out thousands, sometimes even millions of transformations before they're destroyed. And that greatly reduces waste. A good catalyst can also cut down on waste by increasing selectivity. In other words, shutting down possible side reactions. Many catalysts also reduce the amount of energy needed for a reaction to take place. All of this is far more efficient than just the brute force approach. The 12 principles of green chemistry also help us solve problems with energy consumption. Conventional heating is usually an inefficient way to generate the energy required to create many common chemicals. That approach has a significant impact on energy consumption and CO2 emissions. In fact, it eats up almost 30% of all the energy used by the entire manufacturing sector in the U.S., and that's almost 8% of all the energy consumed in this country. But again, there are new, more creative, and more efficient solutions to this challenge. For example, microwaves sound waves, or solar energy. All these can significantly reduce waste, save energy, and reduce carbon emissions, making the production process far more sustainable.
Waste can also be reduced by eliminating the need for solvents or protecting groups, which in many traditional chemical reactions are needed to prevent the breakdown of the more fragile parts of molecules. In particular, solvents in traditional chemistry create tons of waste. In the pharmaceutical industry, for example, solvents account for about 75% of energy consumption, 80% of resource utilization, 70% of chemicals that contribute to ozone pollution, and 50% of greenhouse gas emissions. And many common solvents are toxic to humans or the environment. Sometimes the best way to reduce this sort of waste is to eliminate solvents altogether. In other words, the best solvent is no solvent. And this is possible when one or more of the reagents are used in a molten or liquid state, or when reactions can be carried out on a solid surface. When solvent-free chemistry isn't practical, it's still possible to replace solvents with less toxic or biodegradable substitutes. CO2, polyethylene glycols, or water are some examples. The final sustainable solution based on principles of green chemistry that we're going to discuss in this lecture is the decreased dependence on petroleum, coal, and other limited resources. Rather than relying on non-renewable sources of materials like coal, oil, or even natural gas, chemicals designed using the 12 principles rely on resources that come from either living or recently living organisms and plants that can be more easily replaced. All of this we'll call biomass. We're vastly underutilizing biomass resources that are right in front of us. Right now, only about 4% of the 180 billion available metric tons per year. Since biomass can be regenerated in a human lifetime, it makes more sense to tap into that resource. Various kinds of biomass can be used to create the same things that we're used to getting from non-renewable resources. For example, plastics can be created from natural polysaccharides, like chitin from seafood and crab shells, or cellulose from plant resources like sugarcane. And these are only a few examples. What we've seen in this module is that the 12 principles aren't just good theory. They also make good practice. And they can be used to generate viable solutions to real-world problems that we're facing right now. In the fourth and final module of this lesson, we'll explore some examples of real solutions that use the 12 principles of green chemistry in detail. And we'll show exactly how some scientists have changed the way we practice chemistry at fundamental levels to develop high-impact solutions. Creating these solutions is the final piece in our puzzle.